We talk quite a bit about moral aspects of games and of modeling morality in games, but a lot of this discussion is centered around the perspective of the actions the player can take. This perspective is clearly important, but it isn't the whole story. The game world that the player interacts with is just as important when it comes to drawing the player in. Reactions to actions, creating a world that looks and feels convincing, even down to the aesthetics. All these things are important in creating a world that makes sense to the player, allowing them to make informed actions. Game worlds, when done right, can draw a player in and make them feel like a natural part of the world being presented to them. Actions have consequences, characters behave like believable characters, and the world itself seems to work on its own. All these things contribute to a cohesive world that immerses the player in the game. In order to understand how the game world contributes to the moral content of games, we need to understand what the important components are and how they are built. We need to get into the details of how the world presents itself and how a player is immersed in a story-driven game. And in doing so, we can understand how these components frame the moral content in a game. Well, okay, that last part is going to be in a future video, but for now, let's dive in. Actions and Consequences We've discussed actions from the context of the player and making them in the past, but we haven't spent much time talking about the equal importance of the consequences of actions taken. In some respects, the repercussions of actions are more important than the actions themselves. The impact actions have on the game world are the most direct gauge of how the player's actions are contextualized in the world. When a player undertakes a task that is contextualized as important, the expectation is that the game will respond accordingly. Or, more generally, the scope of the impact should be proportional to the action performed. Now, this isn't a hard and fast rule. In fact, some games like to play with this expectation. But at the end of the day, gamers want their actions to have meaning. When done well, these actions can have a tremendous impact on the flow of the game. For example, in The Witcher 2, review coming soon, a big decision early in the game determines which side of a conflict you are on for a good third of the game. This decision is clearly identified and signaled to have a big impact, but leaves enough of a surprise to still entertain. If done poorly or with little thought, however, the lack of impact can rob an otherwise stellar choice of the enjoyment and meaning that action supposedly had. To take one example, one of the biggest criticisms of Skyrim is that despite the stellar story and myriad of actions the player can take, the impact on the world is minimal. If you do everything or nothing, the world itself seems to change very little. CHARACTERS ARE BELIEVABLE One of the more challenging aspects of story-driven games is the development of characters that the player will interact with. From permanent party members to the average town person, developing consistent and fleshed out characters is just as daunting as it is in other media, and the added complexity in the mix is keeping player interaction consistent with the story. Character creation is a tricky business in any media. Defining personalities, what they do in the story, how they relate to the main character, all these things add up to, hopefully, a character that is both believable and engaging. It takes a lot of work and effort, and as a result characters throughout all media have been shown to be uneven in their definition. When done well in games, characters can teach a player better than any tutorial or in-game book. They live and breathe the world they live in, they embody an aspect of the world in a single form, and the player can interact with them in meaningful and consistent ways. To me, one of the unsung positive traits of the game Dragon Age 2 is that the characters seem to be their own people. They have their own motivations and their own lives outside of the orbit of the main character. The player's interactions with them have purpose, and in some cases permanently change the player's options with regard to party composition and narrative. When done poorly, say in Skyrim, no, this isn't the whack Skyrim video, interacting with people is somewhat static. One minute you can insult a person and he'll threaten to kill you, and the next minute you are best buds bartering. We characters in games remind you that you are playing a game, and for a story-driven game this can be really off-putting. World Building Last, but certainly not least, is the concept of world building. The world in which the actions and characters exist define the contours of those characters and actions. And ultimately, the world is what you are trying to save, redeem, exist in. So it better be worth it since all your stuff is there. World building consists of many parts. Random people in nature, building architecture, land design, history and culture are just some of the aspects of how a world is created. And tying it all together into a cohesive whole is what separates a game world from a bunch of random elements. I think a lot of developers get confused when doing world building. They seem to think that world building involves cramming as much lore into the game as possible. While adding a rich history to a world is important, fake history, like real history, should be relevant to the player and the actions taken in the game. Too often the lore and the actions of the player exist in separate headspaces having no bearing on each other. Good worlds synthesize all of these elements. In the Legend of Zelda series, a lot of attention is given to details such as decoration symbols, numeric representation, and frequent callbacks to the history of the world during the game. It makes a point to connect the current events with the foundations and the histories of the game. Granted, the series' history is simple, but it's tight, and that's what's important. However, when things go wrong like in, uh, um, uh, a certain game by Bethesda. I mean, there's so much lore and so much to do and none of it connects in any way. It's a mile wide and an inch deep. Yeah, I guess this is the Bash Skyrim video. Sorry. So these are the building blocks for games in terms of the game interacting with the player. Each of these topics deserves its own video. But for right now, we have a foundation to start talking about morality in the context of these aspects. So that's it for now. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my video to the end. If you like more of this, you can click on the subscribe link at the bottom, 
And as you can see, there are a couple of other videos that you can click on as well. One of them is one of my prior reviews or another content video, and the other one is going to be a playthrough that I'm doing. So feel free to click on either one. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and thanks very much.